This is a question that came from the ACCN4 paper in 2011, June 2011, under the old specification, but this is quite a likely topic. This is production budget in either section A or section B of any future paper two exams for 7127-2. It covers production budgets, but also a bit of should we buy in the shortfall in production? So a little bit of decision making as well, using marginal costing and contribution to help make that decision. So we're given some information about um, what EBS Limited does. It produces a single product called the FLET. Each one sells for £16 and the unit costs are as follows. £8.60 for materials, direct labour £3.40. So we've got a total of £12 in variable costs, which means that the contribution is £4 per unit. Okay, so that's what that's telling us. Not entirely useful for a production budget because we're only interested in units when we're doing a production budget, which is the first part of this question. But the contribution will come in handy down here um, when we get there in a sec. So 1st of May 2011, 270 units in stock. So that's your opening inventory. And then we're given predicted sales for four months and told that each month's closing inventory is to be maintained at 10% of the following month's sales. And the thing we need to remember because we're doing a production budget here is any maximum capacity for storage the business has got. Now in this question, they haven't told us about any constraints to the storage facilities, so we can just carry on with 10% of the following month's sales for our closing inventory. So what we need to do is start with our columns. So we're doing a three month budget ending in July. So we want May, May, June and July up there. Now it's in units, not in pounds, but remember that the starting point is going to be the sales figure. So we need to know how many we're going to sell. So 2,700, 2,800 and 2,600. So let's pop those in, 2,700, 2,800. And 2,600. So the starting point for a production budget is always the sales figure. Remember, we need to deduct opening inventory. Okay, we don't need to make that, it's already there. So in this case, we've got 270 units in stock at the beginning of May. So we're going to take those off. Okay, then we need to add on the closing inventory because we need to make sure that our production is enough to satisfy sales and then plus any increase in the inventory levels or minus if we're reducing the inventory. Now it tells us that um, each month's inventory is maintained at 10% of the following month's sales. So we're looking at next month, June, we're anticipating sales of 2,800. So 10% of that is 280. Now that is gonna tell us then how many we need to produce. So we're gonna sell 2,700 and we're gonna increase inventory by 10 units. So that means we need to make 2,710 units to satisfy demand and make sure we've got enough in stock. Okay, that 280 is now going to become opening inventory for June. Well, because we've got those in at the end of May, we don't need to make them again in June, but we do need to make sure that the closing inventory at the end of June is 10% of July's output. So predicted sales, 2,600. So that means that this time we're actually reducing the inventory by 20 units. So we need to make 20 fewer units than we're going to sell in order to make sure we've got the right amount in stock at the end. So we're going to actually make 2,780 units. So that's the 2,800 we're going to sell minus the 280 that we had in stock at the end of May, which has come forward into June. And then plus the 260 we need for the beginning of July, 10% of July's sales means that we need to make 2,780. So that 260 can then come up here as a, a negative because we made them in June. We don't need to make them again in July, but we do need to look at August's sales figures to see what the inventory needs to be at the end of July. So 10% of August 2,700 means that we want 270 in stock. So again, we've got an increase. We're going from an opening of 260 to a closing of 270. So that means we need to make 2,600 units plus an extra 10 to allow for the, uh, the increase in inventory. So 2,610 units there. So I mean, this was eight marks back in the day. I don't think we'd be getting eight marks for doing that these days, but it just gives you an idea. So just remember, the layout is always the same as I've done here. 
just watch out for this closing inventory because if they told you that the maximum storage um, was, for example, 260 units, then we would need to make sure that the closing inventory was never higher than 2006, sorry, 260 units. Okay, so that's part one of the question done. If we look at the second part, they give us some more information. So hopefully you can see that okay on the screen. It says, unfortunately, the only cutting machine on the production line broke down on the 14th of May 2011 and all production stopped. Only 1,600 units had been made. This is in May. Now, if we look at the production budget here, what we needed was 2,710. Okay, so our shortfall is the difference between those, 2,710 minus, uh, let's do that in my calculator just to make sure I don't mess this up, 2,710 minus the 1,600 we've made is 1,110 units okay that's the shortfall um, the expectation was that it would take several weeks to repair the machine well, it's already the 14th of may so several weeks is going to take us well into june so we're not anticipating being able to make any more um, units the production manager was worried that the production targets would not be met in preparation for the busy summer period well we can already see that we wanted 2710 if you remember just to recap that was on our production budget there We've actually made 1,600, so we are short by 1,110. Um, so he therefore purchased the shortfall in units from, um, for May from Ogo Limited at a cost of £11 each. Each of these units had already been cut but required further production costs of £3. So actually the costs for those are £14. Um, what you've got to do is explain the financial implications of the decision to purchase the units from Ogo Limited. Okay, now, what we need to do here is have a look and see perhaps what the situation would have been had we been able to make them. So the current contribution, which we worked out up the top there, is £4 per unit. Okay, it's the selling price of £16 minus the variable cost of £12 is £4. The new contribution... It's still going to be a selling price of £16. That's not changing. But now we've got £14 of variable costs. So it's only £2 per unit. So it's halved. It's gone down by 50%. Um, so obviously, if we didn't buy them in or hadn't have bought them in, then we would never have made any contribution on those units. So definitely to £2 per unit is better than nothing. So um, 1,110 units two pounds means that we are getting positive contribution of 2,220. Obviously, if we'd have made them ourselves, our contribution would have been 4,440 pounds. So the financial implications are that even though we've made less of a contribution, it is still a positive contribution, it was worthwhile doing. Um, a question in the current specification might ask us to kind of think about the other implications. So things like the fact that you'll be able to satisfy demand would be a good thing. Um, because you are able to supply all of the units, you know, per your production budget. So you've maintained market share, customers aren't going elsewhere. Um, potential downsides, though, obviously it's making less profit than if we had got the machine up and running. We've, we've lost an extra, you know, the extra 2,220, so the extra two pounds in contribution times the 1,110 units. Um, and also we maybe could have some concerns about... Um, delivery times, quality of the products, that kind of thing. So hopefully that's given you an idea of production budgets and what extra um, things might be um, attached to them were they to come up in section B. I think for 2022, quite a likely section A topic. Anyway, thank you very much for watching.